Liberty Me, here with Lucy Steigerwald, a new columnist for antiwar.com and a wonderful blogger behind the Stag blog. Lucy, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you also write for Vice, which is, uh, I mean, it's a big deal right now. A lot of people are getting into Vice. I think they're doing innovative things that, uh, that nobody else is doing. And you recently wrote about legalizing heroin. I mean, th this, is a, this is a cool issue, I think. Um, some people think that nationwide pot legalization is inevitable. I, I agree. So why heroin next? Why is that important? Well, I mean, back in the, the strange days when mainstream politicians weren't fighting over each other to say, no, I'm for legalizing marijuana. I mean, Rick Perry, we have all these people now who are trying to compete suddenly. And I'm not that old. And I remember when nobody talked about this except libertarians. Like, I'm sorry, we get all the points. Or a few <laughs> radical leftists, maybe. You know, and suddenly all the mainstream people, I mean, some, like, Colorado and Washington has, have made it okay to really talk about this and really painfully slowly, but it's, it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Baby but steps. With me some people previously talking about medical marijuana, were worried that marijuana could get stuck in medicinal, and they were like, you know, I'm sorry, there's nothing wrong with my recreational love of marijuana. We don't want it stuck incredibly restricted and regulated like a prescription drug or something. And there are plenty of problems with legal prescription drug restrictions, of oh, course. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you could... The same concerns can apply to, oh, legalizing recreational marijuana. You know, we know it's not even as bad as alcohol. It's really not. It's, it's, it's you know, pretty sensible and safe. It's not like all those other scary hard drugs, uh, like heroin and meth and everything else. Um, so there's always a, there's, there's a logical fear if you're, if you're overstressing the safety of this new thing, you know, it'll be okay under these conditions, these restrictions, that you're going to you're gonna be implying, but we're never getting to those things because those are scary. We're not crazy. We don't want to go that far. And, I mean, the Vice piece I wrote mostly from, like, a, a health, you know, and safety angle, but there are there are plenty of other angles. I mean, Jacob Salem, uh, my former Reason colleague, um, wrote a whole book, Saying Yes in Defense of Drug Use. It's a, it's a great book, where he talks about the existence. There are people in the world, I wouldn't recommend trying this, I don't plan to, you know, functioning users of hard drugs. Mm -hmm. Like, it is possible for some people, um... Some people have, you know, tried hard drugs and they didn't overdose and nothing horrible happened to them. And obviously the, 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 the libertarian-centric principle that you own you and the state definitely does not also applies. I mean, everything bad about drugs is still there under the drug war and you just put a, an idiotic, dangerous, evil prohibition thing on top of it. Sure. You know, nothing is being cured. So, so that's why. <laughs> oh, well, definitely, definitely. But, I mean, I don't even understand why we don't talk about things like heroin as, in terms of the medical aspects, you know? I mean, when you need a painkiller and when you go to the hospital, now I think it's ridiculous that hospitals and the government have monopolized painkillers of this magnitude uh, sure. so that you have to actually pay ridiculous amounts of money to, uh, to go to the emergency room if you need a painkiller, which some people do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, why is it that we can't have a situation where, you know, people want small amounts of a potent painkiller like heroin and the market comes up with a way to safely take it. I, I think that would happen, but, you know, we'll, we won't know because it's going to stay in the black market and therefore be much more dangerous than it would be if it were just out in the open. But, you know, this is, this is basic libertarianism. You know this already. So, I mean, I just, I just, I don't understand what all of this early... 20th century, I, this hubbub, all the scare tactics. It's, the, it's, it's, it's a reefer madness for all of it. Mm -hmm. And it was, I mean, I, I don't even know what the number, I guess. Probably millions of lives. Definitely millions of lives were ruined by the drug war. And it's going to be hard in the magical future, in the Jeffrey Tucker topia, where, you know, the drug war is, is dead and gone, for libertarians not to be kind of smug because... We're the Republicans who like to smoke pot, right? <laughs> and that's another reason why I'm I'm down with some, you know, some 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 honest disagreements with non-libertarians. 
But honestly, my, my the most infuriating one is always you don't care. <laughs> you don't care about poor people. You don't care about ex-oppressed people. And, you know, I'm... I'm purely for your right to be like a, a selfish asshole libertarian if that's your bag and all that sort of thing. But a big part of why I'm libertarian is that I do care about those people, those people who are being completely crushed by the state more than anything else. I mean, so don't tell me I don't care, Kyle, even though you're not telling me that. <laughs> well, I, I can't think of a better way to put it. That's fantastic. Lucy, uh, thanks so much for being on the show. Uh, really sure. appreciate it and uh, look forward to having you back soon. All right. Bye. Hey, thanks so much. <laughs>